Hello, how are you? This is Tim. This is book one for July 2020. I can't believe it's July already. We're working through these things. Um, I want to provide as much material, as many readings as I can, especially since we have no idea what school is going to look like um, come this fall. So I want to make sure that you have a space, we have a space where we can learn and teach each other. I'm going to read, this is a book of essays, and I'm going to read Boys to Men by Kristen Henning. <clears throat> it says, The Role of Policing and Socializing of Black Boys. On September 15, 2015, 16-year-old black male Emilio Mayfield was on his way to school when an officer stopped him for jaywalking in a bus lane in Stockton, California. An officer told Emilio to sit down, but he refused and continued walking toward the bus he was trying to catch. The officer eventually grabbed Emilio's arm and Emilio pulled away. After forcing Emilio to sit on the sidewalk, the officer grabbed Emilio's ankle and pushed him backward into the ground by pinning his ankles against his upper body and hitting him with a baton. The encounter escalated as nine officers became involved at least four of whom piled on top of Emilio after slamming him to the ground. The irony, jaywalking isn't an arrestable offense in Stockton. Emilio was later cited for trespassing and resisting arrest. <clears throat> on Memorial Day in May 2013, 14-year-old black male Tremont McMill McMillan was at the beach with his family, friends, and puppy when an officer forced him to the ground and held him in a chokehold, so tight that he wet his pants. His transgressions, clenched fists, and dehumanizing stares. The backstory, Tremaine had been roughhousing with a friend on the beach when a Miami Dade police officer told him to stop. Tremaine asked why, and the officer ordered him to point out his mother. As Tremaine walked toward his mother with his puppy in his arm, the officer followed him in an ATV, jumped out, and put him in the chokehold. Tremaine was charged with felony count of resisting arrest with violence and disorderly conduct. These are just two stories that made the news. Consider the many abuses, transgressions, and unnecessary intrusions that young black males experience in the United States that are never reported to the media. Consider the many reports of injustice that are passed by word of mouth in black families, schools, churches, and communities. These narratives have profound impact on the way black boys learn to think about and interact with the police. Because adolescence is a time when initial impressions of the justice system become fixed in a child's mind. Early encounters with the police, both personal and, and vicarious, have an enduring impact on the way young black males respond to the law and law enforcement as they transition into adulthood. Perceived injustices like those shared by Emilio and Tremaine undermine police legitimacy and erode the child's willingness to obey the law, report criminal activity, assist the police in investigations, and cooperate with the police during future face-to-face -face encounters. Over time, negative police interactions with black boys have cascading consequences for public safety, officer safety, and ultimately the mortality of black boys and men. The black juvenile spider, I mean super predator, implicit racial bias and perceptions of innocence. Black boys are policed like no one else, not even black men. Youth in general are more likely than adults to have contact with the police as they play in the streets, congregate in public spaces, hang out past curfew, drink alcohol, ride around in cars, and talk loudly. Because youth may be arrested for minor crimes, such as curfew violations, and being incorrigible, incorrigible with authorities, their contacts are also more likely to be policed, initiated, and adversarial. Young black males who move in crowds, Joan, and play fight like Tremaine McMillan and his friend are even more likely than young white men, young minority women, and older minority men to attract attention from the police and experience verbal abuse, excessive force, 
unwarranted street stops, and other negative interactions with police. Further, although black girls are far from immune to the harmful effects of negative police contact, especially those involved in sexual mistreatment, black girls and women are socialized to play differently, tend to have less contact, less contact with the police, and are more likely than black boys to benefit from discretionary, lenient behavior by the police. The reality is that we live in a society that is uniquely afraid of black boys. Consider the 1990s rhetoric surrounding the black juvenile super predator. In numerous articles and television interviews, Princeton professor John DeLulio Jr. predicted that a new generation of street criminals is upon us. The youngest, biggest, and baddest generation any society has ever, has ever known. America is now home to thickening ranks of juvenile super predators, radically impulsive, brutally remorseless youngsters, including even ever more preteen boys who murder, assault, rape, rob, burglarize, deal deadly drugs, join gun-toting gangs, and create serious communal disorders. DeLulio was not alone in promoting this demographic theory which gained extraordinary traction in the media and among politicians seeking to earn a reputation as being tough on crime. <clears throat> so that's how we start out. July. Rough, rough, rough. I've been stopped three times in the last three years, which is more than I have been stopped the rest of my life combined. And I know I'm almost 50. You can see my gray hair. So if they're doing that to me, just standing around, um, I can't imagine what black men who are 20 um, and teenagers are, are going through. And um, I'm glad that we're protesting and maybe we can stop some of this. And so we're gonna have to protect them, our, our teenagers, but I've been saying that for decades. We're also gonna have to protect them from when the cops are gone, private contractors because if you think cities and counties are not going to hire anyone to do that you're sadly mistaken so we have to be diligent we have to be careful and we have to protect our young boys and girls thank you for your support and until next time please take care of your mind take care of your body and be safe